we rolling. Palm Beach for us, it was just, man, it was just, uh, I guess, us walking to the basketball court, and we finna ball from from 12 to 12. It ain't even matter. It ain't even matter if the lights close, and if the lights turned off or whatever. So we was just, that's, that was our so Saturday. So what you did as kids? Yeah, just yeah. go to Shannon Hall and go ball. It's just always busy, especially on weekends. Weekend, everybody out. I think everybody got some money in their pocket. Everybody at Family Dollar, everybody at McDonald's. It's just a party all through the streets on weekends. <laughs> Would you guys say that's one of the positive things that kids can do in this neighborhood? Yeah, um, you know, because um, when you playing ball, I, I think, you know, nothing else matter. The only thing that matter is who got next. Who got next on the court? If you ain't got next, okay, you call next. You get down. That's the only thing that matter. I don't care if you was, you know, in some type of trouble, or you, you what, what, what kind of house you lived in. Here, it was just, man, you just got a ball and you got to come out here and make the best of it. And it's the crazy thing, it was different nationalities, like, you know, whites, blacks, Hispanics. You know, it just, everybody just come together and they just ball. I, I feel like to me, it keeps you out of a lot of trouble. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, even just any, just anywhere, just anywhere where it's just, you know, you just being active or whatever, even if it's a field, playing kickball, whatever, keeps you active. Because when, one thing that, that I noticed, like, in life, when you get bored, you know, you tend to do super stuff, you know, that's just how it is. You know, it's dangerous to be bored. And that was kind of like how pick up the ball started and stuff too, right? With yeah. that idea of like, if people have things to do, if they're doing something that's good for them, Stay out of trouble, right? Yeah. Now, uh, before then, it was just us playing ball every single moment, every single day. It was, hey, bro, you coming to ball? Yeah. That's how it was. Like, but now it was, hey, hey, you want to go ball? And then after that, we go to the meeting. All right. You know, it gave us something to do. And, you know, as far as with Mr. Ted, he opened up more opportunities for us, you know, and just life and, you know, showing us many opportunities and showing us what we can have and just, you know, be a better man in life. What are some of the things that you don't think kids in your neighborhood were always exposed to growing up that you're learning now that you're part of these mentoring I organizations? Think, I think love. Yeah? Like, more love, like, and just the proper, you know, role models proper role models because role models t to me back then was you know people that you know sold drugs people that you know did you know females wrong for mm -hmm. instance my godfather um you know he taught me you know how to be a man you know how to handle things even when times get hard and things like that so he was that big role model in my life he was that father figure in my life so i don't think too many kids have that all the time about mm -hmm. school and things like that. And, um, do you feel that that, as, a, as an adult now, do you feel like that's limited you in terms of you know, your schooling or your planning or anything like that? Yeah, it really did. Because I feel like I would have been able, if my mom would have been more harder on me um, and I wouldn't have had to stay home from school and try to like, take care of her and my siblings, when they were, were babies, I would have been able to um, go to school, basically. Because I really didn't you go to school. You skipped a lot, right? Yeah. yeah. I stayed home a lot, um, taking care of my sister and, and making sure my mom was safe and all that stuff like that. And I feel, I know for a fact that's what be going on in a lot of these homes. These mothers feel limited to where they have to stay with a man that, um, that beats on them because he take care of them. And mm -hmm. it shouldn't be like that. You mean like financially, right? Yeah. Like I pay the bills, so you gonna have to deal with this. And I feel like it shouldn't be like that at all. Talk a little bit about how you got yourself out of that situation. Like here, here you are. You're married. You're, you know, a strong Christian. Um, how did you get off that pathway and go against this environment? I think it was my mindset. Really, that's what it really was. I didn't want it. I didn't want that lifestyle no more. I was kind of, especially after my mom passed, I'm just like, okay, this is it. I can't do this. I'm, I don't want to, she used to always tell me, don't be like me, be better than me, and that was it. So, as soon as my mom passed, I was just like, okay, no. I'm out of the shack, I'm out of this type of lifestyle. 
I'm done with the fighting. I need something different. Mm -hmm. So that's when I went. I went ahead and I looked to Jesus, and that's when my whole lifestyle changed. Do you think your example will run off, rub off on your little sister, on, on TT? I hope it do. Is that what you're hoping for? Yeah, I, I really hope it do. <laughs> I had to bring them over here, man. Show, show them what you was doing up here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and we do a lot of stuff in this community on a weekly mm -hmm. basis. Mm -hmm. We do Bible studies. We do um, we train the kids, and um, McDonald's provide us lunch every Sunday. So every week we we in this community. So I was like, why not doing this community? And we got Next Level and Riverside Church and Boys and Girls Club. They partner with us. We in five Title One schools right now. Mm -hmm. Not just me, oh, just right. other schools. And uh, we do mentoring and stuff like that. I got a own. I got an inner city curriculum, mm -hmm. so it's reader friendly. If a kid, if a kid come to school and he hungry, I don't want to learn about two plus two. Two, I'm Why hungry. Getting abused. Yeah, it's survival. It's survival. And poor teachers, they don't really understand that. They don't understand that. women. That's true, they look way. Like you. I know. So a woman, a woman has a different type of perspective than a, than a man. But and a woman really, growing up in white suburbia has a different exactly. perspective too. I so hate to say it, I, but it's if true. I, if I come to you and I'm like, man, what's up, man? I, I, I ain't do nothing. I ain't do nothing. They might get, a, they might feel threatened, and that kid get rolled up. Yeah. Not this kid labeled as a bad kid, but he a really smart kid. But his home life is terrible. Mm -hmm. That's what you see running ragged. And the welfare system has messed up everything. Mm. Yeah. Messed up everything. So you got these single parents who, who can't get married. Are they not going? They they not going to get their government check. So, right. get, so you can't be married. Can't be so that blood, that, that, it's crazy. That, that, that broke up. That broke up the the homes. And so they're looking for something to be a part of. Yeah, mm -hmm. they're a part of Hoops on Mission, uh, different types of organizations. It's right here in this community. There's sixth to eighth graders walking around with guns. With guns. I know. And it's not, and, and they, and they got to protect crazy. themselves. So how can I tell this person don't have a gun? Mm -hmm. Hoops on Mission, when we have these camps, when we go into their schools, they feel like they're a part of something. As a um, community, as a different type of race, Mexicans, white, mm -hmm. black, um, um, Puerto Rican, Haitian, all type of race. If we can just all come together, you know, just talk to the um, to the people that's over the city and we can get better facilities, better projects. Every project should have a basketball court. Every project should have a facility where kids can play in the game. Mm -hmm. So these kids won't have no other, no space, no room to do other things like drugs and guns, like you were saying. These kids in the projects and the shack don't got no other hope but to just pick up a gun or pick up drugs because that's the only thing they see. Right. Besides, these kids in Michigan, all they see is a basketball court. So it's rare. I'm not saying you don't see drugs, but it's rare that you see it in Michigan. But you go here, you feel like you're in a third world country. This looked like a third world country. We might as well get baskets and walk, walk, walk with it on our heads. Because that's what it looks like, you know. So so they're comfortable in that. Instead of getting, instead of um, building yourself up into a better person, going to college, getting a better job, and getting out of this place. Not getting out of this community. This community got plenty of nice houses. But getting out of this place, and this is a place where, you know, John Walken can be rebuilt, and they can give it a new name like they did in Michigan with, re with Renaissance. They can rebuild John Walken and give it a new name with a nice basketball court, with a beautiful park, you know. Kids don't really got nothing to do here. My mom and dad was in my life, and, I, and I'm proud to say that they really did a lot. But when they couldn't do much, because they really didn't have much, you know, living in Michigan, um, I'm on Michigan and Civil Farm, to be honest with you. Mm -hmm. Living in Michigan, we get cars like that from groceries, and we play with them. Because we, we didn't have toys for Christmas. We didn't have toys at all. So we would play with those. See, one thing about dads do make a difference. You got a father in your life, it does make a difference. Then you got kids that don't have a father in their life. They don't eat in the morning. So they go to school, like he said, okay, what's two plus two? Man, two plus two ain't in my mind. You know, you're hungry you know, you're learning hungry. about who was our first um, president, George Washington, ain't in my mind. Learning about the Civil War with Abraham Lincoln ain't in my mind. Mm -hmm. I'm hungry right now. Mm -hmm. I'm, I, don't, I don't care about this stuff. So, you, so teachers frustrated and they're thinking like, what am I doing wrong? Why, what am I doing wrong? Why, why is this kid so bad in my class? Instead of getting a personal relationship with this kid and figuring out something going on. What if somebody don't got ability to work, you know? What if somebody been hopeless their whole life and they seen their mama, you know, doing nothing for them? How they know what the job is? So that's why you and me, see and CJ, and you guys are all trying to, like, talk to kids. Talk to kids right? to help them listen. To... Go to college, go to school, finish, get your education, 
and be what you want to be in life. Mm -hmm. You know, be the lawyer you want to be, be the teacher you want to be, be the doctors and nurses you want to be. But do not settle for this. Just because you see it, don't settle for it. There's hope still. 